I've been tempted to quit comedy, quit L.A., uh, get up and leave, um, like, every second day. And I'm not exaggerating and just thinking, I'm driving home right now to a bed, which is just recent, not even that sometimes, uh, like a coffee maker and, like, my guitar and, like, no real friends. I've got my brother. Thank God for that. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be here, that's for sure. But I think in the back of my mind, just going back to Vancouver where there's people that give a shit and and just living there and working a normal job just so that I can see these people and then it clicks in for me again. I go, no, you don't. No, you don't. You don't. You're not going back to that because the truth is those people don't have time in their schedule and they move on, grow up, have kids, move to the outer city like the rest of us anyways. Uh, my name is Josiah Black and I'm a comedian here in Los Angeles and I do some freelance acting work as well. I was raised in a small town uh, just north of here of California called Canada. Uh, it's uh, Vancouver actually. All right, should I stop the act? Is that I, I'll go all day. I will. You do need to stop me. Like you know, I've gone through music, acting, um, firefighting, all this other stuff, and I just never felt so in my element, other than just telling jokes, or you know, getting to be my quirky self and getting away. With, not only getting away with it, but being accepted and and praised for it. For those same things that got me fired for more than half my jobs, you know, I am that guy. I get, I got moved constantly in the classroom, all the time. Growing up, I, I was the wild one. Um, I'm, I was the oldest, so my younger brothers would always look up to me, and think, okay, don't do that. I like to see myself as like a Mark Wahlberg of the Four Brothers, you know, like, like what are you doing? Stay away from that. Don't touch that. Get out of the way. Beer. Now go. You want me to go pick up some beer for you? All right. All right. I have been heckled. I except I never. I never see heckling as being heckled. I see it as having a conversation. Like, oh, okay. You wanna. You wanna step into the cage? Let's go. Let's do this. One of us is gonna walk out alive. Like it's fun. Being like, I've been told I'm. I'm like a warm, really friendly presence on stage, and. And since I'm so open like that, it, it engages people to want to speak. I remember I was heckled once, though, at open mic by another comic. I was asking him what I looked like, you know, because I was doing this thing. Like, I think I look like, you know, Sean Penn or, uh, you know, De Niro, you know, I do the thing. And, and when someone in the shadows way back just shouted, you have John Cusack's nose. I just stopped and I was like. I was like, oh, you have uh, Eddie Murphy's shut the fuck up. I, yeah, I met Jay Leno just like a week ago, and that was a really cool mo moment for me because I'm walking past the guy, and I'm like, I, it's a crime not to say anything. Mr. Leno, and he goes, yeah, yeah, hey. He puts his hand out, shakes my hand. I go, young comic, big pleasure to meet you. He goes, oh, cool, yeah, where are you from? Where are you from? I go, Vancouver, uh, actually. He goes, oh, yeah, where like uh, 30 years ago, like uh, you know, a little club called the Comedy Cave. You know, like, oh cool, yeah, I'll keep an eye out for you. I was like, thanks. My brother is my my anchor out here. We've got each other's backs. Like, that's the best piece of advice to anyone that I've got for trying to make it in LA. That's not even my advice. Cause you need somebody. You need someone. And like, when you got each other, you can watch each other's backs. You know, just like Forrest Gump. You know. I think we should sleep on uh, against each other's backs so that way we don't get our face in the mud. You know, it, you just need that. And you know, you can share a room and split the rent. You can talk to somebody about the day you had, let alone that, that right there is worth it. And it's tough to find that in people out here that don't want something from each other. You know, he was 19, underage at the bars, and he would go in as my manager, Polly James, and carry around a tripod and a camera wear this funky fedora hat, and that's what, how it worked. I got myself into all these places, and he would talk to people after shows and get me booked. I'll be up there on stage telling my jokes, and I'll, I'll, put, I'll have some new material in there, and I'll do my new stuff that he hasn't heard, and I can hear his laugh as if it's the first time he heard it out in the audience, and I'll know it's like, there's Paul, 
and it just makes it feel like that much more of my living room 